you may wonder which processes take place when you light a match. First, the wood heats up and moisture is released. The heating up of the particle happens mainly by convective and radiative heat transfer. At increased temperatures, so-called pyrolysis takes place, also known as fuel devolatilization. In this process, thermal decomposition of the fuel takes place under fuel-rich conditions. The products formed in the fuel devolatilization process are water vapor, a mix of hydrocarbons, carbon oxides, and a multitude of chemical organic compounds that include hydrogen, sulfur, and nitrogen. In addition to this, a solid residue is formed, which is called char. An oxidizer mixes in and diffuses into the form mixture, which ignites. This needs a sufficiently high temperature. Combustion of volatiles takes place relatively easily. This is an example of a homogeneous reaction. Finally, the oxidizer reacts with the char residue in a heterogeneous gas solid reaction. An example of a heterogeneous reaction is the reaction of the char with oxygen in the air. A heterogeneous reaction involves species in different physical states. In this case, gaseous and solid states. In general, gas-solid reactions consist of different steps or sub-processes. First, we can discriminate the mass transport of reactant molecules to the solid surface by convection or diffusion, depending on the flow conditions. Then, the reactant molecule from the gas phase needs to adsorb on the solid surface. Following this, complex elementary reaction steps with reactive intermediates take place, involving the adsorbed oxygen molecules to the carbonaceous surface and gas phase species. Then, desorption of product molecules from the carbonaceous surface take place. Finally, the transport of product molecules from the surface takes place, again via mass transfer mechanisms of convection and or diffusion. The following picture depicts a solid char particle and a relatively thin boundary layer around the particle. By devolatilization, the particle has released complex volatile matter. We can see the mass transfer of oxygen over the boundary layer by reaction processes at the surface, CO is formed. CO reacts further with O2 in boundary layer and bulk gas environment to CO2. Depending on the availability of oxygen, CO2 can react with the carbon on the surface to CO. Water can also form in the oxidation process at the fuel's surface depending on the hydrogen content of the char. Depending on the availability of oxygen, water can react with the surface in a heterogeneous reaction to hydrogen and CO formation. Complex reactions in the gas phase can take place both in the boundary layer and in the bulk gaseous environment around the particle. The choice of a combustion reactor system for energy supply based on biomass depends on many factors. Among them, the particle size distribution of the solid fuel is of a paramount importance. Also, the scale of operation is a determining factor for the choice of a combustor and gasifier. Dealing with these and starting with the largest scale of reactor going down to the smaller scale reactors, we have first the pulverized fuel combustion systems. Basically, these are large towers with many layers of distinct burners in them. This ensures combustion, a kind of 3D flames of powder dispersed in a gas flow, like you have in a gaseous fuel combustion. The residence times in such furnaces are typically a few seconds only. The combustion takes place at very high temperatures, exceeding by far 1,000 degrees Celsius. In this regime of combustion, with high temperatures and low residence times, the particle size requirement is much smaller than one millimeter. For coal combustion, particle size of about 50 micrometers are used. Typically, the conversion is governed by external mass transfer of oxygen to the particle. Since temperatures are very high, the reaction rates are also high. Biomass particles are often not so easy to grind down to such small sizes, 
So extensive pretreatment is needed to make the biomass more brittle and easier to mill. Also for larger scale combustion as well as gasification, fluidized bed reactor systems are used. This reactor type allows feeding of larger biomass particles up to the order of several centimeters. Typical operation temperatures are lower than 900 degrees Celsius. This temperature is to be limited as the ash constituents, mineral matter, can react with bed material particles to form lower melting point eutectic compounds. This is called bed agglomeration. Formation of such compounds leads to operational problems in the combustor or gasifier as the gluing together leads to issues with mixing and some zones of the bed become hot and others cold. Finally, we have the class of fixed bed or moving bed reactors. Herein, particles that can be large are combusted. Air is usually distributed through a bottom that can be moving like a traveling grade. These systems are also used for waste incineration, which is well established. Typical temperatures are also above 1000 degrees Celsius. Resonance time of the particles is higher than mentioned in the previous systems. Here we can see in one glance a simple representation of the reactors used in combustion systems for energy supply based on biomass. Here we have a pulverized fuel combustion system. A, co a suspension of fuel and air is combusted herein. In order to improve mixing and flame stabilization near the burner, also we see swirlers incorporated. Additional air, also called secondary air, can be entered separately from the air that entrains the fine fuel particles, which is called the primary air. What is a fluidized bed? Nothing else than a system with a bed of solid particles through which the oxidizer, usually air, is blown. This creates a vigorously mixed system in which fuel is fed. There are two basic types of fluidized beds. Bubbling fluidized beds and circulating fluidized beds. The first bubbling bed systems are operated at relatively low velocities in which the sand particles are at least just lifted by the drag force of air. Then bubbles of gas are formed that flow through the bed and improve mixing between oxidizer and fuel particles. The mixture of solids and gases behave fluid-like. When the velocities are increased so as to surpass the terminal velocity of particles, then the solids are transported through the reactor. This is what happens in a circulating fluid as bed. One or more cyclones separate the particles from the gas stream and the particles are returned into the main reactor. In the return bag, heat exchangers can be placed to generate steam. Finally, at the right hand side, you see the fixed bed moving combustor, as mentioned previously. Gasification of solid biomass fuels is considered separate from combustion and can in some layouts be considered as very fuel rich combustion. However, also gasification can be established at high temperatures with steam and or carbon dioxide without the direct use of air or oxygen. In such systems, heat is supplied externally. There are four reaction steps that take place during gasification. The first is the heating up of particles and moisture release by evaporation. At increased particle temperatures, pyrolysis or fuel devolatization takes place. This process leads to the formation of char and volatiles. These volatiles are of a complex mixture of hydrocarbons and other gases like CO, CO2, water, hydrogen and light hydrocarbons. The partial oxidation of volatiles that takes place depending on the oxygen content in the process. Furthermore, heterogeneous reactions take place between the char and oxidizing gases. The most important reactions will be posted in this section to further study gasification processes. Gasification gives flexibility to the solid biomass conversion process as a combustible gas is formed which can be used in many downstream processes. This includes the generation of gases and liquid derived fuels. Often for these purposes, a clean and well-defined synthesis gas is needed, which consists mainly of CO and hydrogen. This is a major advantage of gasification over combustion. 